Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final presentation of our 10th anniversary, uh, ADEC and Blend. I am Margot Shaw, Editor-in-Chief of Flower, and we saved our flower girl for last from Blue Jasmine Floral. Her name is Paulina Milwaukee. How'd I do? You did beautifully. <laughs> Okay, I think we need one of these for that, right? Yes, you do. She did great. She did great. <laughs> okay, well, uh, just a little bit about Pauline. Um, she is the owner of Blue Jasmine Floral Design Studio in Berkeley Heights, uh, New Jersey. And her floral design style is guided and inspired by flowers and foliage. She loves dainty accents, color, texture, and each stem's unique shape. Paulina's work extends to weddings, events, a floral subscription service, photo styling, and floral workshops. She has 64,000 Instagram followers. You got me beat. Where fans <laughs> are way beat. Uh, where fans are inspired daily with her beautiful and unique floral arrangements. Uh, please welcome Paulina. Milwaukee from Blue Jasmine Floral. Paulina, how are you? I'm so great and I'm so excited to be joining such an amazing panel and to be part of this amazing conference. It's really, really special. Well, we think you're special and I'm so glad you said yes because I've been, I've been one of those 64,000 followers <laughs> for a while. So um, thank you again for joining us. But I, before we launch into these um, images, I wanted to uh, tell everyone uh, that when we're through with this short presentation, Paulina is going to do a demonstration for us. Um, so stay tuned. So I wanted to find out from you how you got into floral design since you were what? I was a originally a linguist doing a lot of translation and interpreting services, moved on to uh, high school teacher. I was the AP language teacher and uh, I had an itch that I had to scratch creatively and I had to, you know, really think about what that would mean for me and flowers were, was the natural, the natural um, path to take. We are glad that you did. And um, can you just tell us a little bit about the name of your business? Yes, so Blue Jasmine is actually the, this is where the translation comes in, um, uh, the direct translation of my grandmother's favorite flower, which was Jasmine Celeste. And that is, like I said, directly translated to Blue Jasmine. And the botanical name is actually the Plumbago flower, which I'm sure some of you out there may even have in their gardens right now blooming. Okay, and so that was your grandmother's favorite flower. And what language was that? That is Spanish. Um, my family is from Uruguay, South America. Um, my parents immigrated here in the 70s. I was born here. So I do have, um, that is my native language, actually second, English is my second language. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah, love so that. it was, it's great because I, I got to visit often and Plumbago there, it just flourishes. It is, they enormous these bushes with this intoxicating periwinkle light blue hue it's just you can't not look at it it's it really I just love it mm -hmm. I am with you and um so speaking of color let's walk through some of these images because I really like and appreciate your use of color and romantic and uh well anyway i'll let you tell us what it is let's talk about this image on the left absolutely this image is an installation where i really focused on texture um i wanted this to be ultra feminine uh so we worked in these pale pinks some apricots and you know instead of just making it super pink i really this lavender i feel like really rounded out the color story. Um, the inspiration behind this is actually this allium that you see here on the mantle. Mm -hmm. um, if you actually study that allium, you can see almost pinks inside of it with the little purple um, dome. Uh, so it was, it's really kind of what drove this installation. So I, I just was so excited about that one. <laughs> I, 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 I was so excited I made you include it. In yes. Your 
on point. <laughs> so what was the event or the occasion or were, were you just playing around? This was actually done for a conference that I had done with um, Team Flower and they asked me to do a textual installation and they just sort of let me ride with it. Um, so I did part of it and then because I, um, I'm just, I'm constantly wanting to play and make flowers and y'all out there, I actually made this installation above my head yesterday because I couldn't help it. If I have time, I'm instantly hanging things and making installations. <laughs> so I wound up adding the um, hanging installation above the mantle to connect, to kind of make this ramification uh, shape because I thought, that was something that I've been wanting to do and wanted to see what that would look like. And I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with that. I, I would be too. It's exotic, but it's still accessible. I, I really like it. So tell us about the one next door. So the one next door is a similar um, style where it's very, very textural. I really like using plumosa fern because it has this frothy airiness and the trundles are just so delicate and beautiful and dainty. Um, and I, I don't know what I was doing. Um, I think I was reading some article on something and it was about celestial things. So it, somehow it popped into my head that this Orlea lace and baby's breath can communicate this kind of celestial mm -hmm. stars and, and I don't know, kind of galactic feel. So mm -hmm. this is actually a ring structure that I had welded three copper rings um, so that's the base of the structure. And then I wanted to feel almost like the Milky Way kind of beaming down with a little arrangement that's just little stars and little dainties. So that's where the, the blues came in and the actual shape of the installation um, was inspired by. It's magical, very organic and kind of spontaneous and, and I love it. And, but So speaking of structures, what is the structure for this installation on the left? That is actually a um, Harlow stand from Accent Decor. It is the tall one, which I believe is 45 inches tall. Um, and then from there, I attached a branch to it that I actually just foraged outside. And that is what helps me extend the line all the way up. Um, and then it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of chicken wire. Uh, and that is what makes it also nice and fluffy and, and wide. It gives it the, the girth that I need instead of using a little singular pole. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really, really effective. And um, so let's see what's next. Okay, so these are more installations and I'll, I'll give you a little insight on um, just so before we pop into the next one, this is actually the same mantle that you saw in those original images, but I wanted to give you guys just how, how different it could really look in a very different look and feel. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Um, and so this, these uh, arrangements at the foot of the mantle are reminiscent to me of that gardeny loose look that you have really mastered. And we'll talk about that later, but this is really, really pretty and wild and loose, but um, I know it's not easy. It looks, it looks simple and wild and everything, but I know there's a lot of time and discipline and, and art that goes into it. So, um, and I like that gray background. It helps it, I think, pop a little bit. It brings it, um, I think it makes the pinks really vibrant and it makes the oranges look a little bit more uh, lush and, mm -hmm. and vibrant. I agree, I loved it. It's like on a, a gray day, if you take pictures outside, the colors are more vibrant than if the sun's out. So what about this next one? So this next one is, Number. this was a just for fun piece. <laughs> where I wanted to, this is just a hanging installation of Forsythia. Um, but the idea behind this one was a little bit more sculptural, um, a little bit more, very, very, very high attention to the branch shape um, mm -hmm. and just really highlighting those nuances. Uh, so I just thought that that was just kind of fun. And it's nice to see Forsythia just be the star all by herself, mm -hmm. um, not mixed in with anything else. It, it, I thought it, it gave it a little bit more impact than if I would have loaded it up with, you know, other yellow flowers or, you know, other um, foliages or any other ingredient. She's worthy of her own show. 
I'm so glad that uh, that you did this hanging and because to me it just adds so much more interest and uh, imagination than if you'd had it on some kind of pole or uh, in some kind of container. This you can barely see the line and it's um, it's really clever and really beautiful. So thank you. Margo. You're the best. <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Here's our next one. Okay, so you are showing us now what I, this is how I think of you and your styles somewhat, as well as the installations, but you are really a master of these uh, compote, uh, loose, gardeny, asymmetrical. I mean, I just think you're so good at this. So talk about these and your technique a little, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, this is definitely um, something that I feel like I finally found my voice after a few years of designing. Um, I was able to hone in on, you know, what is it that I really enjoy? What do I want this to look like? And ultimately, most of my designs, if you notice, I, I like to use a high variety count. Um, I like to use a lot of small dainty blooms as I think that that adds a little bit more texture. Um, and you'll see during the demo how I really do begin by setting the shape in the very beginning. So okay. I let I set the shape, but after the basics are down, I do let the flowers do the talking and they, they guide me more than I guide them. Mm -hmm. So if there's a really interesting, um, I always look for one stem that has an interesting curve or something um, just fun to highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll see how even towards the end, then that's when I add the drama. I always call it the drama. So in the picture on the left, um, it's like that geo, the GM and the scaviosa are really giving this design a more dramatic asymmetrical line. Um, and on the image on the right, uh, it's that fox club reaching really, really, really high on the right. I mean, on the left, and then even the, the fox club and the baronia arcing over to to the right, it's it's giving this uh, more drama and more exaggeration of, of the um, design. And the other thing too, is if you look at most of the things I do, I make the center really, really low. I really mm -hmm. depress that in there it, to really highlight some negative space. Um, I mm -hmm. think the negative space is where I find the most beauty and the most interest and I always, I'm very conscious of making sure there's negativity to highlight. For example, on the image on the right, if you see the little butterfly ranunculus, it looks like it's just floating in the middle there. Mm -hmm. um, so if I didn't have that nice and low in the middle, yeah. those nuances would get lost. So that really is what I, I focus on and I do in almost every single arrangement I do in this for compost. Well, that makes sense. And I've never thought of that. So, um, I'm going to remember that negative space. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Bouquets. <laughs> oh my. Oh, okay, these are both exquisite and so successful. Talk about that. Oh, I love making bouquets and I love a lot of flowers. <laughs> I always say the more flowers, the better in a bouquet. Um, and I very much like to um, cluster in a bouquet. I think bouquets really can get, um, nuance can get lost. Mm -hmm. So um, over here on the left, I did a little bit of a cascade of yellow, cascading to the right, really concentrating that pocket of yellow. I concentrated a little yellow with the daffodil as well. And then if you notice, there's a little triple poppy happening on that side of the bouquet because I still, I'm thinking about negative space. So instead of the negative space being in the center, of, like in the centerpiece for a bouquet, I use more of an aerial, more of a vertical plane of how I think about negative space. And I play on the two planes with really dainty and fluttery things so that when she's walking down the aisle, I mean, I want things to be bouncing as if the, the bouquet is alive in her hands, not, not static, right? So it's excited too to be walking down the aisle. Exactly. And I love color. I just love color. It's, I think color stories are really interesting in bouquets on how you can create a really interesting color story. Mm -hmm. um, on the right, if you notice, I actually tried to do a bit of a Hogarth line with the light pink. It starts mm -hmm. at the top of the Cosmo. 
it bleeds down with a little bit of sweet pea and then you hit another Cosmo, the Lava Terra, the Pink Majolica. So it really, your eye is traveling from the top of this cascade all the way to the bottom down to that orchid. And you're not getting stuck anywhere because the color distribution um, allows you to, to really travel and, and look. And it's not like a, like a black hole or I'm always very conscious about where the colors are laying in a bouquet. Movement is just perfect because of that. All, all the textures and colors and um, the placement. Uh, you're right. I don't get stuck anywhere. And I start with that white Cosmo and go all the way down. It's just lush and, and beautiful. I love that. And I like it with her pink uh, workout pants or whatever. I know. Fun fact, that's me. <laughs> I like it with your pink workout pants. Excellent. Back to that panty. Uh, right, I you know I wa I went into work and I actually took a picture with it with a very, with a mint green color dress and it came out pretty. And then I I looked at this bouquet and I'm about to wrap it and I said to my colleague Holly I said you know what let's just snap a picture with this pink pant. I know it's crazy. I said but you never know it might look great and I liked these images so much better. I feel like the the color really popped even and more because I, I agree it's the same color as the peony. Yeah, just so vibrant, just perfect. Paulina, tell us what you're going to demo for us. So, I'm going to demo my signature style compote arrangement. Um, I will let you in on what the mechanics are behind these pieces. Um, today, I am using an accent decor ceramic compote. It is called the Julian. I really love it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of a shallow bowl. I don't like it to be too deep because then you don't get that abundant feeling. And then my mechanic is, so Floral Genius is my favorite. They are American made. It is a Kenzen pin frog. Um, and I am very particular about using the three inch that they are my favorite for regular compotes. I mean, the bigger the urn, the bigger the pin frog, but this is the best, most versatile out of all of them. And what was on the bottom of that? Oh. So in order to secure it to your vase, this is just Oasis floral putty. Okay. I don't care what color it is. It comes in white and it comes in the green, um, but I, right. It's great. Right. It's amazing. And I'm very, um, conscious of making sure that the perimeter is fully, fully wrapped and a little bit on the actual edges to make sure I have a very secure um, pin frog because the, you don't want it to be moving around on you. Not unless you do. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so should, should I get started, get the party started? That you will. All right, so I use Scissors mostly. I um, before I begin, I I just my tip is always to use a needle nose. And this is just my favorite tool at the time at the moment. Uh, but every tool I do use, even if it's like a um, ARS tool or anything, I'm particular about this needle nose so that I can go in and manicure. And mm -hmm. um, if things are feeling heavy, for example, if I have. Um, using a little bit of Mandina that I had cut from my foliage garden. But let's say I want it to feel a little less heavy. I sometimes just trim it back a little bit mm -hmm. to give it a little bit more negative space, a little bit more air. So it's nice, you can get in really tight with that. Mm -hmm. All right, so should I talk a little bit about what kind of flowers we have today? Uh, uh, perfect. All right. So today um, I wanted to use a lot of the most common things that I do use so that if you're going to try this at home, you know, some more or less how to buy or, or what to buy. Um, I always have a focal flower, which is, which is just a big flower. It's a big face, whether it's a rose or a dahlia or a peony. Um, these are called toffees. They're so beautiful. They're so so unique with that brown beige cafe au lait color. And that swirl, hi, yay, yay, amazing, amazing. Um, I always have a lime flower. 
we have some local snapdragons today. Right. So what I mean by a line is that the color goes all the way through in a line pattern, right? So snaps are great for that. Um, I have some local zinnias. Love those. They're right. so humble and so pretty. Aren't they? And I actually have them in a couple different sizes. Oh, great. I mean, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have some, <laughs> I clearly really love flowers. <laughs> I have, these are a carnation. I, some people don't love them, but I think they are just exquisitely lovely. Look at the ruffle. They're mm -hmm. so rich. And I think they have just suffered from, uh, 1950s <laughs> applications of, you know, a corsage or, um, you know, an FTD. Yes. Or, something but no they're beautiful what's that this is the lysianthus i love lysianthus i mean it's 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 just as beautiful from the back mm -hmm. i mean i kind of i like to look at the stem in all of its glory mm -hmm. so these are also local and then to finish off I, I talked about dainty things and how i like dainty things so i really do need small flowers mm -hmm. i have a couple of ranunculus so small. I mean, who doesn't yeah. love those? I have those little teeny zinnias, and I have this is what I call so. As we were talking about color stories, you notice the color is a little bit of an analogous color scheme. It's not too crazy, but I always like to include a pop, whether it's just something to make it interesting. So today we have this fiery Lucifer Crocosmia. So it's going to be really fun to include this, this little pop. And I think it's going to. So I'm, I have those in my garden. So now I'm going to see what you do with them and I will copy you. You have to, you should do it. And the other reason why I think they're going to work is if you look at the stem, the stem has this golden yellow in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the base of the flower, mm -hmm. which is exactly the same hue as our ranunculus. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to think about making sure that these girls are together and then we're going to deepen that with the mustard. So the color story starts to read. And then the pinks will read as well because the pinks are going to tell their own little color story and the snapdragon also has this golden hue in it. So, so the crocosmia, is it the same thing as the mambrisha? You know, and is that, did you call it the um, Lucifer? What did you yes. call it? And Lucifer is the color. It's okay. just this okay. really bright, beautiful. Yeah. And that little trumpet, I mean, they're just the sweetest. <gasps> the curve. Mm -hmm. That's a good curve. We're going to have fun with that later. <laughs> uh, and the last but not least, um, like I said, I have foliage uh, from the garden, Nandina, and I also cut some Hugura, which is the hardiest thing in the world. Everybody should have this in their garden. It is so beautiful. They are like little works of art. I love them. I love them too. And I cut a different color, a couple color varieties to see what, we're, what we wanna do with that a little later on. And I'll show you, um, they're always very short, but they are my finisher. So we always talk about finishing to, to round out our design. So I'm gonna get started. And like I said, I always set my shape first. So I'm gonna let, the flowers guide me. So I start with foliage. And this is kind of nice is I picked this one because it already has a curve on it. So I'm actually going to do it. Most people think it's going to move this over a little bit. Uh, most people would want it to go downward. I always point it upward. And then I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. Make sure you guys can see. Okay. Is that taped? Did you yes. tape? Oh, I have tape. I forgot to mention. So for this specific design, because I want to pack it with flowers. And if you want to actually have it transport, I have a teeny tiny little, I can bring the computer over. I have a teeny tiny little chicken wire layer, oh. just a single layer, not a double, because I want to be able to hit that pin frog. And then I tape it down just so she's not dancing around in there like your friend Paulina. Okay, so then I'm going to take this. So I want this asymmetrical shape. So I'm going to take my second stem. 
So this is more Nandina. Yes, this is more Nandina. It's a very, very tiny stem. So sometimes it's a little hard to get it in that pin frog at first. Perfect. And then I always talk about, so I have a little bit of a negative space here, but I wanna bring the color all the way down. So I'm gonna give my first stem a hug. I always like to hug the first stem with a little bit more greenery. So I'm just gonna grab a couple pieces here. And what I'm doing, and I'm gonna spin this around as I go. So if you see now, the color comes all the way down to the base. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side so that no one feels left out and that we have balance. I talk a lot about balance as well. Can I interrupt and say that I'm realizing that <clears throat> I'm the same size as you are, which is not exactly what we want. It okay. can expand your shared screen. Good. No. Okay, no. Okay, keep going. Never mind. All right. You're big enough. <laughs> maybe should I go on speaker view, maybe? Yes, it depends. Everybody has a different um, everybody okay. has a different okay. So template so um so just to give you a concept that's where i am at right now so i've set, i've set the size and i've set the shape i'm probably not going to go further than this but i always like to think about my vase as being a, a cute little bowl and i want it to feel like it is abundant and just overflowing with flowers so just like i gave this one a hug we're gonna give our other one a little bit of a hug. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny piece and put it over here. And then I'm gonna take right. another little piece. Ah, there we go. Okay. So at this point, I've now set my size and my shape and I'm very, very methodical of the order that I place my initial things on. I always continue with my line flower because what I'm doing is I want to, I've now set things. So I want to make sure that I have an idea of where to follow my lines. So I'm just going to start filling out and I always go from the outsides in just like so. So again, we're bringing the color all the way down and I'm gonna mimic, I'm gonna give my stem another hug with the flower on this side. Okay. And I actually have some pink ones too. So I'm gonna, thought it'd be interesting if we cluster our snap colors on either end. So on this end, I'm following that line that I've created with my foliage. And I'm making sure also that nothing is of the same length. So I don't want the tips to be at the same length to make it look a little bit more natural. Because okay. right? our gardens, when we look at our gardens, nobody is growing on the same, nobody's the same height. So make sure I get it in there. And then again, I'm gonna give it another little hug on this side. You talk about flowers like they're your friends, and I think you must think of them that way. I do, and I think they all bring such personality. Um, I'm gonna continue with my focal flower. So my focal flower is my big flower, and I pulled five roses, but I may or may not use all five. And I'm gonna do the same thing, focusing on the edge of the vase here. There we go. So what I've done is now I'm creating here. And I, I know I have a little negativity here, but we have other things to plug in. So again, for balance, I wanna make sure that this mustard color is on the other side of the arrangement. So if you're sitting on this side, you also get to enjoy one. And then I'm gonna, this one has a little bit of a nice curve to it. So I think I'm gonna play with that concept and I'm gonna dart it over this way. Great. 
So I need to ask a question from someone who's typed in. Do you determine the shape beforehand or plan as you go based on the flowers that you have? I mean, I know that you have that, that design that's your signature design, but do you let them, do you let them determine the form, the line of the uh, arrangement? More or less, yes. I, I have, I always wanna do something asymmetrical more or less. Um, but if there's a stem that has a really amazing curve on it and the, the design starts to pull a little bit drapier, then I will accent that. Absolutely. I will let the, the flowers do, do the talking. So are you, um, able to source, you talk, you kept talking about locally grown. Um, what's your source for that? Uh, we have a flower collective here in New Jersey, which is very special because we have a bunch of farms that participate um, in getting us uh, fresh cut flowers. Uh, and we have a manager and we have a, a meetup point where all of these flower, uh, flower farmers cut, we can pre-order with them. It's, it's truly an, an amazing thing. Um, so that's how I'm a, a able to really source a lot of local because it's all centralized in one space. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm continuing on. I'm now adding layering in a little bit of the pink. And like I want to keep this nice and low in the center. I'm just going to cut a little shorter. So don't be don't be afraid to cut nice and short. There we go. So now we're introducing this a little bit of this pink mm -hmm. over here. <clears throat> so someone's wondering if we could possibly get a um, plant list when you're through. Sure. Of what I'm using right now or, or just in general of what I see what you should buy. No, for this. Okay, perfect. So what I'm starting to do, if you've noticed, I'm starting to, you know, I'm keeping the, the middle nice and low. I'm starting to fill out mostly the perimeter. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the lysianthus and I'm okay like with that's a big lysianthus. It though. is enormous. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the more the better, but it's, I've never seen one that large. It's like so impressive how they got it to get it to be this yeah. large. So, and then what I do a lot of times is I start to push everybody. Everybody needs to relax. Um, now the very center, a lot of people always ask me, well, what do you do with the center? I cut something super duper short and I put it right down below. It's not really there to be viewed. It's there to just cover mechanics. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember me saying that I like people to have the eye travel. So if I have this apricot here, I have one in the middle and now I'm gonna put one on this side so that the eye is traveling through the arrangement as well. Paulina, I need to ask you, is there a way for us to see this overhead a little bit? Yes, pick up your computer. <laughs> right, so it's just like this random lingering lysianthus that I'm then gonna hover things over, mm -hmm. smaller, okay. daintier things. So what it's doing is I, I almost call it like the foundation of the house. It's not there, it's just there to be purposeful. It's not there to actually be viewed. I'm starting to layer in a little bit of this coral and I actually matched it with the orange here. I'm gonna layer in a little bit more on this side. So balance. And I really love how the zinnia just gives it a little bit of, all right, so we're gonna start having fun here in a second. So see how this is kind of nice and flat? Yep. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more height. So Marvina is not having her questions answered, but I'm seeing this question. So I can't figure out why I didn't see your other one. Uh, what is the name? Here's one. What is the name of the object in the bottom? I guess she's talking about in the bottom of the compact. Oh, that is just a, a pin frog. That okay. is um, something you can even source them on Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. You can get them at most uh, 
not at most, but you know, anywhere really on Amazon or, and I get mine from Harmony for our harvest, which you can just buy online. Okay. So it's nice and easy. So what I'm doing here now is I'm starting to extend my lines. I'm starting to make this, like I said, a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to hold up on this Zinnia. I'm going to layer in a little bit of this ranunculus. And I think because this is such a really cute, simple little shape, it's not super windy, but it's still really sweet. I'm going to highlight that. Oops. Let me go in on this side, actually. I have a little bit more real estate in my pin frog. And the beauty about the pin frog is that it just stays. I mean, if you notice, I put it in there and that's just, it's there. It's not going anywhere. So when you say pin frog, you mean P-I-N, right? Yes, yes. Okay, somebody asked the spelling of that. Um, and, and someone's asking about uh, the ranunculus that um, they, they're available for such a short time. Uh, where do you get yours? Very true. This is, I tried to source as local as possible for this arrangement, but I do source from a couple different vendors that um, provide me South American product. Okay. So that's where that came from. Um, these are, I believe, from Chile. Okay. So we're starting, and I, what I did here is I cl I'm clustering the yellow, and I think I'm going to cluster a little bit of yellow on the other side as well. And I'm just going to let them float and be fun on the outsides. This is so good. That way you get, ooh, look at that one, ooh. She has something to say, doesn't she? She does. All right. She does. So we're still allowing the negativity through this space here, right? So someone's asking about your lazy Susan. Where can they get one? Talking about your uh, turntable. Oh, I love my lazy Susan. Um, the wooden one I got from Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> Okay. And I just have a little marble topper on it to um, protect it. I just, I like the weight on it. Sometimes I'm doing things that are very, very heavy mm -hmm. and I tend to find it um, a little bit hard um, because the Lazy Susan will start to topple. Right. So uh, they have marble Lazy Susans as well that you can get. <laughs> um, again, you, you can source them online, on Amazon, things like that. Uh, so I'm layering in a couple more of these zins and what i'm doing here is i, I just created like a mom and a baby There's a little more of a, a little more fun here's something can we talk a little bit about substitutions sure like for roses someone's asking what you might substitute for those um dahlias uh peony when they are available um, anything that has a large face. So um, even if the, like, for example, this Lysianthus is so enormous, uh, I would have maybe just used the Lysianthus as, as the large face. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I have a little bit of a pocket here. So I'm just gonna, that's where I always save a rose for the last for more towards the end, because that's where I put it. I put it wherever I need to fill. I try not to over design. Mm -hmm. overpack because then I think that's where you lose the airiness and and mm -hmm. the I don't know the just the the flow of of what you're doing we go a little shorter with it well it keeps looser exactly. when you don't pack it. I think you know so many of us were <coughs> weaned on the uh French hand tie which is beautiful but when people started making so moundy right height which is still pretty that pave look or what is so pretty is, but this is loose and friendly and agreed and yeah the more flowers you put in there the more you get away from that so i'm with you precisely so where would you um where would you take this someone's asking what the final destination of this particular design might be uh my house <laughs> A um, but this would be, um, for example, yeah, I would do, I could do this for a wedding. Mm -hmm. um, I've done this before for very, um, there are people that do requests, for example, there's like a big birthday mm -hmm. and a husband or a partner wants to gift a really, really fabulous uh, arrangement, then I will make something of, 
in this um, light and in this style for them um, because it does take a little time and it takes a lot of product. So that's, you know, I try to, this isn't like an everyday thing, but um, it's really nice for bigger occasions. I mean, I've even done this for rehearsal dinners and, um, you know, depending on what the theme is of, of what people are having. Okay, so I've started to plug in a little bit of the greenery. And now I'm just kind of covering up a little bit of what I feel like looks a little bit stemmy. So we're here. Um, I'm gonna start with the Crocosmia and I'm, I'm going to manicure it down because I really just want it to be a single. Now I'm not gonna throw away the arms. I'm gonna plug in the arms elsewhere. And then, so I, I talk a lot about adding drama at the end. I, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to get this on the screen. I'm gonna ask my, my colleague Holly to back up the computer just a little bit, have a little bit more space to show you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I want this thing to now hover above the, that original greenery to really give this thing just that really special, it's a little long. I don't want it to be too far away from my zinnia. So I, I know you said that um, this is a, a sort of special occasion design, but I'm thinking if you, if like I would put that on a console in my front hall. Absolutely. And, I that mean, would everyone, and then I would pull from that smaller things that have sort of the same palette or something, but this or a centerpiece on a table or on a pedestal or I mean just it's a it's a masterpiece in the making. Oh you are so sweet. No, it is. Look at it. So what I did here, remember I talked about this, I call it like the bomb color, the red. Originally you would may say to yourself, oh it's not going to work, but I do feel like it is working just because what I did was I pulled from up here, but remember what we want the eye to travel. I bring it down to the base. So I'm that I'm very intentional with where that color lands. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Again, I'm just doing some singles. And I really like to do a little double of my drama, my drama queens here. And you'll see it when I push it, uh, when I turn this thing around, you'll see what, what it's doing. Oh yeah. So now it's adding this flow. And then, because why not? Yep. I'm gonna highlight, so what we did with the ranunculus here, I've created this negative pocket. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hover one right over here. Can I ask you, um, someone wants to know about the vase life of this uh, beautiful arrangement. If some flowers start to uh, fade, can you replace and with what? Yes, you can. Um, these are, somewhat on the delicate side, not so, so much. This arrangement should last, if you water it every day and all that, maybe about five days. Okay. Um, the Crocosmia is very bloomed right now. It's a little bit more what I call event ready. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I would just replace that. I mean, maybe with like a little bit of greenery because um, I'm packing this with so many flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you can replace it with anything dainty, Queen Anne. You can go cut it outside on the side of the road. I love, I love cutting these some what I call roads roadsidea. Anything yep. that looks cool on the side of the road. <laughs> that Latin botanical name, yes. Right, right? exactly, you know. Um, so I'm just taking the arms of the Crocosmia and I'm using it as dainty texture mm -hmm. right now. And this is just, I love Procosmia, I really do. And I, I love it in the yellow as well. I just thought this red was so fiery and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just gradating that color down just a little bit more again. And I only have about one more. So I could be a little bit more dramatic. And then sometimes I say to myself, do I want it like that? Or do I want it go, to go up? So I think we're gonna just extend this line a little bit further and see where I land. Okay, let's see. So where. someone's asking um, how you affix the chicken wire to the frog. I do a little, um, so if the frog's in the, in the, here we go. So frog in the compote, I just, I take 
the diameter of the vase and I cut this tiny, tiny little square of chicken wire mm -hmm. and I just curl it in to hug mm -hmm. the pin frog. So okay. it's not covering the pin frog, it's just like a dome over it. And then I do a little bit of tape. Okay. And like I said, it okay. really to helps. Compote, you mean? Yes, to the compote brother, yep. So the Hucura is really special. I think, I think I'm gonna go with the more chartreuse -y color. Pretty. I think that's gonna lend us. So I have a little bit of a pocket here. So I'm just gonna have her hang out a little bit deeper. I want her to be, she's a background singer. She's not, she's not our pop star, right? 20 feet from stardom. Right. Um, so can you tell our audience approximately the cost of this retail? Retail, um, maybe 275. I'd okay. say we, we are in the New York City market, um, yeah. so it's a little bit pricier around here. But yeah. I could make this with less flour for, let's say, 175. Mm -hmm. So look at how nice the Hucura just oh, anchors perfect. it, right? It just gives yeah. it a really pretty color. You know, and, yeah. Right, and if you see, there's like a red veining. I'm going to pop it underneath this Procosmia here on the base of this of the vase on the other side. And I'm going to show you how it almost makes it pop even more. So that for Cosmia is really, really, really nice. Um, I'm going to ask my colleague Holly to come back over here and push it a little bit closer. And I do have some Coral Bell Cucura, which is, this is what do they call that? The inconsequential flower that it, that it has. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to, I like the dark stem of it. It pulls the darkness of the Procosmia through. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just do a little cluster just on one side, um, on either end. I'm gonna do a little bit more greenery and we are practically done here. And then I'll put it down on the table, take it off of our little spinner here so you can really, really see it. And what I also like is that the zinnia has a little bit of a darker center, some of them too. Mm -hmm. So it helps play off of that. You got it. These are just so delicate and sweet. Oh, look at the curb on that. Okay. Beautiful. Right? I mean, yeah. maybe she goes on the side. I love a curve. The curvier, the better, right? Yes. Amazing. And I always want them to have a friend. I don't ever want them to be alone, right? Just exactly. Getting little families in there. Yeah. So someone has asked, what would you say is the hardest part of building an arrangement? Oh, the hardest part, to be honest, for me is actually the mechanics, is making sure that the mechanic that I'm using is absolutely incredibly stable. Because the minute things don't catch and they, they start to move, you know, frustration starts to settle in. You're create, you start to lose your lines. Um, as I design, I, I notice I'm, I'm really thinking about color and I talk about the lines and where I'm putting texture and all of that. If I'm starting to struggle with that, it just goes out the window and, and then I feel like I have to start from scratch mm -hmm. um, creatively in that regard. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing that I find difficult is if you have, if you don't have it for me, if I don't have enough of a dainty flower, if I don't have enough texture, I feel like the arrangement starts to look flat. Mm -hmm. Um, just for my own kind of personal taste. Okay, great. We are all set. We're all done. I'm going to perfection. Just take it down. Okay. So that you could really see. Bravo. Yeah, let's put, yeah, great. Move it back a little bit further. Uh -huh. and, and I do want to just recommend to anyone who is enjoying this, if you follow Paulina on Instagram, Blue Jasmine Floral, you will just have a wash of these, just all these beautiful designs and installations. It's just eye candy for days. So, oh, yes. Um, no. Um, true it's true so somebody um and i think this is a great question could you talk a little bit about the uh mechanics for the hanging for sissia back to that oh that's a great question um it's funny i actually have it 
fully dried um, hanging in my studio right now. Uh, all it is, is I took a chicken wire tube and I created almost like the letter J with it. So that was my guiding shape. And what I did was I used the curvature of the forsythia to make the top feel like a little bit more of that crescent moon. Um, so the one thing about that piece, that was a piece I had this, I came into the studio at like seven o'clock in the morning to make that because I couldn't sleep. I literally could not sleep that night thinking about what I can do with this thing. I'm like, oh, I need to make this, I need to. So that was just for me, just for fun to see if I can actually make this thing happen. Um, it doesn't have a water source. So it only lived about six hours. So if I were to sell that to a client, um, I would be making that on site and very close to um, reception start time. Yeah, I'd be very conscious of that. Uh, but yeah, it's just chicken wire. And the more you mold your chicken wire, whatever the mold you're doing in your chicken wire is what you can, you can acquire pretty much any shape, anything you want. Well, it, it to me was just so radiant oh, and almost that. like a sheath, you know, like wheat. I mean, just the way it was all gathered together, but it had so much movement. So I'm glad somebody asked that because I got to gush about it a little bit more. Um, this is absolutely perfect for us for yeah you're not in the, you're not in the way i'm trying to see if there are any more uh questions i think you've answered all our questions to i hope everyone's satisfaction certainly mine Great. and um i just want to thank you so much for being a part of our 10th anniversary adac and bloom with flower magazine and um Let's give it just one more. Let me do a little spin for you. One more shoulder. The shoulder move. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feel it. Right, it. right. If if you if y'all if y'all will follow me, you'll see me do a lot of I do do a lot of stories. Um, those are where I get really wacky and fun. So uh, oh. follow along and you get to see a little bit more shimmies. <laughs> You are wacky and fun, but you're super talented and, you. and unique. And uh, thank you again for being with us. I'm so and glad to have been a part of this, Margo. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. And thank you again to Adek and Bloom and all our sponsors, Century, Accent Decor, and Mayesh Cut Flower. Everyone have a great rest of the summer. Go out and cut some flowers and do some arrangements. Bye.